found a dead roommate in our house, and had to face it mainly alone, thanks to my previous experiences with such. I, 28M, live D with three male roommates, Artie, 50-ish, Darren, 45, and Eddie, 27. Now it's just Artie and Eddie. Three of us were new to the house last September, while Artie has been here for around a decade. None of us knew each other beforehand. Thursday night around 9.30, Artie and I found Darren's dead overdosed body in his room. Eddie hadn't been home all week, he was house-sitting for his parents. Darren's girlfriend had texted Artie saying she hadn't heard from him in a couple of days, and we three, Artie most of all, had been having some light roommate problems with Darren and for two weeks had been privately discussing and planning how to approach the subject with him so we thought Darren may have suspected something and been trying to avoid us, so Artie knocked on his door and then when there was no response went inside and found him. He immediately rang the cops, and immediately after that banged on my door to get me and I went and saw Darren, too. Artie and I reeled for maybe another minute or two together and then the cops arrived. The rest of the night is a pretty big blur, I got in touch with Eddie fairly quickly to break the news, and Artie and I needed a little space from the house after the coroner came through and took Darren's body so we each stayed over someplace else. Shout out to my fucking amazing boss, first person of several that I called since it was already late and I didn't want to be calling her any later than I had to, who spoke with me for a minute or two, and then 10 minutes later texted me that she'd gotten my next three shifts covered. Fucking love that woman. Big fan. I got the impression pretty quickly, that same Thursday night before Artie and I went to find different places to sleep, that he was taking it hard. For the most part we all got along pretty well as roommates, Artie's been sort of a den mother figua. E, utilities in his name, he tends to take point on relationships with the landlord and downstairs neighbors, so on. Works well enough, simple, easy, so yeah. But with Darren it was instantly different. Artie kept saying how he'd never seen a dead body before, this was his first time, he doesn't really have any experience with this sort of thing etc. Cops also gave us the number of some cleaners who tend to deal with this kind of thing, for us to pass on to the landlords and get things taken care of. Artie kept saying how he wanted the cleaners to take all of Darren's stuff, just empty the room and trash everything so we could post the listing for a new roommate and move on from this with our lives. Sounds dickish, but Artie's a sweetheart, and obviously that makes no sense, Darren's stuff's gotta go to his next of kin. Reading between the lines, it was extremely clear extremely quickly that Artie was just reeling, hit hard by this, and needing it to not be a thing in our lives. Me on the other hand. I've had experience here. My dad died young, he had a stroke months before that, I helped take care of him, and so on. Grandma died and I saw that. This is gonna sound weird as shit and really bad but growing up my mom was also terribad and wildly emotionally unavailable to help me come to terms with and understand my dad and mortality, so as a preteen and teen I sought out an understanding of death on my own. I spent a lot of time reading about serial killers, looking at pictures of crime scenes and mutilated dead bodies, and even watching snuff films. It's not okay but it is what it is and I was a child with no adult supervision or emotionally available adults around me. Fuck me up pretty bad for a while, but now I'm just a dude who this kind of thing doesn't really affect anymore. So like I said pretty quickly I realized this was hitting Artie a fuck of a lot harder than it was hitting me, and that was even with the realization that of the three of us I was PR, probably closest to Darren. I had the most answers when the cops were asking us about Darren, and so on. I resigned myself to take point here, take over from Artie's default. Friday I was the first one back to the house around 1pm and have been home since. I coordinated with the landlord and met a lady from a cleaning agency here. Showed her around, made nice, she took her pictures, quoted the landlord, and they had the crew out here that same afternoon. I was home for all of it, checked in on the crew, told them what to do, had them give me Darren's keys so I could take his house key, the whole shebang. As much as I knew about him we also didn't have any emergency contact information for him or anything so I also spent the day sleuthing and tracking shit down. Artie came home that evening after the cleaners left, stayed a few hours, we chatted and I checked on him, and then he left. He's been home again today but tonight once more he's sleeping elsewhere. He's yet to stay here more than a handful of hours just to pick some stuff up and get stuff done. Eddie returned this afternoon and is asleep downstairs. Update 1 Darren was a complicated guy. When he was a baby his parents killed a convenience store clerk for drug money and went to jail. I wouldn't be surprised if he was one of those babies born addicted to drugs. One of his uncles was a serial rapist. And the first time Darren met his own biological dad was when he introduced himself to Darren in jail just so Darren could put him back in touch with his mom so she could get him exonerated. That's all Darren's dad wanted with him. He had also been arrested for the manufacture and sale of methamphetamine a few years back. But, when Darren moved in with us, he'd, like I said, Darren was a complicated guy. But I liked him. We'd hang out and chat. I admired how incredibly far he seemed to have come. He was uniquely eccentric and his trademark brand of quasi-disjointed storytelling was equal parts and consistent cohere, and yet wildly entertaining, but he was incredibly self-aware about it and about his eccentricities and he would play them up and put on a kooky expression for shits and giggles. I'm gonna miss him, even if he may not have made the best roommate and if the issues we'd been privately discussing we had with him were likely to continue to escalate if he survived. According to his girlfriend he'd started doing fentanyl though, so he evidently relapsed sometime in the last month or two living with us and that's likely what ultimately killed him. 
We have to wait for the report to be sure, but the cops said it looked pretty cut and dry like an overdose, many needles were found in his room, and like I said his girlfriend posthumously said he'd been using fentanyl. I not only had to track down all these different people in Darren's life to make sure everyone's informed and on the same page and working together, but in the last couple of days I've had to wear multiple hats and seriously practice my diplomacy skills to keep the peace between the many messy parties in Darren's messy life, as well as us three roommates, all to maintain our boundaries and protect ourselves and our home from people in heightened emotional states during a massive tragedy who know where we live. I've kept my roommates well informed throughout this whole process in our group chat, giving detailed periodic updates slash reports but without obliging either of them to consume them. My perspective is that I'm obligated to give them the opportunity to stay informed as this affects all of us living here, but they're also obviously going through their motions and processing their grief in their own way so they may choose not to keep up. That's okay, but I still have to do my part. It's my responsibility to give them the opportunity to be as informed as they'd like to be. I've also offered both comfort and support, validation, and checked in on Eddie and especially Artie multiple times throughout this process. I've made sure they know where I stand, and I've taken great care especially with Artie for him to know and trust that as compassionate as I am for Darren and as much as I liked him and am working hard to mindfully and considerately keep the peace between everyone he left behind, it was objectively supremely fucked up for Darren to do what he did knowing the risks and knowing he was potentially putting us, especially in this case putting Artie, in the position that it turns out he indeed did put us in. Both Artie and Eddie have thanked me profusely for taking point and for my handling of the situation. Artie has taken me up on every tight hug I've offered him and won't shut up about how impressed he is with me. The various people in Darren's life I've now met through these incredibly unfortunate circumstances have similarly expressed gratitude for my gentle care towards each of them, compassion for their situations, helping them understand, and making sure they're all okay, too. I'm so, so fucking proud, of everything I've done. There isn't a single thing I regret or would change about how I handled what was in my control. All I regret is that Artie had to see Darren's body at all, I wish I'd been the only one to find him. But, like I said, that's obviously beyond my control. Darren had likely been dead a day or possibly even two or three by the time we found him. It's easy for me to trust there's nothing we could have done to save him, either. I've spent years working hard on my emotional intelligence, on my communication skills, on how to be considerate of and empathetic towards others, all of this. I used to be a severely damaged kid who only knew how to communicate frustrations with violence and could only fulfill emotional needs through escapism, manipulation, and trauma dumping. For a while I felt I understand more than most now, about all this stuff. A year and a half ago I finally went NC with my abusive mother after two years of trying to work with her follow. What a lifetime of mistreatment. But this? The last 52 hours? This proves everything I've been believing about myself after all the hard work I've been putting in for a decade and a half.